This is a reading from The Secret of the Rosary by St. Louis de Montfort. 28th Rose. St. Augustine says quite emphatically that there is no spiritual exercise more fruitful or more useful to our salvation than continually turning our thoughts to the sufferings of our Savior. Blessed Albert the Great, who had St. Thomas Aquinas as his disciple, learned in a revelation that by simply thinking of or meditating on the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, a Christian gains more merit than if he had fasted on bread and water every Friday for a whole year, or had beaten himself with his discipline once a week until the blood flowed, or had recited the whole book of Psalms every day. If this is so, then how great must be the merit that we can gain by the Holy Rosary, which commemorates the whole life and passion of our Savior. One day Our Lady revealed to Blessed Alan that after the holy sacrifice of the Mass, which is the most important as well as the living memorial of our blessed Lord's Passion, there could not possibly be a finer devotion or one of greater merit than that of the Holy Rosary, which is like a second memorial and representation of the life and passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father Dorland says that in 1481, Our Lady appeared to Venerable Dominic, the Carthusian, who lived at Treves, and said to him, Whenever one of the faithful, who is in a state of grace, says the rosary while meditating on the mysteries of the life and passion of Jesus Christ, he obtains full and entire remission of all sins. Our Lady also said to Blessed Alan, I want you to know that although there are numerous indulgences already attached to the recitation of my rosary, I shall add many more to every fifty Hail Marys, each group of five decades, for those who say them devoutly on their knees, being, of course, free from mortal sin. And whosoever shall persevere in the devotion of the Holy Rosary, saying these prayers and meditations, shall be rewarded for it. I shall obtain for him full remission of the penalty and of the guilt of all his sins at the end of his life. Do not be unbelieving, as though this is impossible. It is easy for me to do, because I am the mother of the King of Heaven, and he calls me full of grace. And, being full of grace, I am able to dispense grace freely to my dear children. St. Dominic was so convinced of the efficacy of the Holy Rosary and of its great value that when he heard confessions, he hardly ever gave any other penance. You have seen an example of this already in the story that I told you of the lady in Rome to whom he gave one single rosary for her penance. St. Dominic was a great saint, and other confessors, other confessors should be sure to walk in his footsteps by asking their penitents to say the rosary together with meditation on the sacred mysteries, rather than giving them other penances which are less meritorious and less pleasing to God, less likely to help them advance in virtue, and not as efficacious as the rosary for helping them avoid falling into sin. Moreover, while saying the rosary, people gain countless indulgences which are not attached to many other devotions. And, as Abbe Blosius says, the rosary, with meditation on the life and passion of Jesus Christ, is certainly most pleasing to our Lord and His Blessed Mother, and is a very successful means of obtaining all graces. We can say it for ourselves, as well as for others, for whom we wish to pray, and for the whole Church. Let us turn, then, to the Holy Rosary in all our needs, and we shall infallibly obtain the graces we ask of God to save our souls. <clears throat> 29th Rose, Means of Salvation. St. Denis said that there is nothing more noble and more pleasing to God than to cooperate in the work of saving souls and to frustrate the devil's plans for ruining them. The Son of God came down to earth for no other reason than to save souls. He upset Satan's empire by founding the church, but the former rallied his strength and wreaked cruel violence on souls by the Albigensian heresy, by the hatred dissensions, and abominable vices which he spread throughout the world in the 11th, 12th, and 13th centuries. Only stringent measures could possibly cure such terrible disorders and repel Satan's forces. The Blessed Virgin, protectress of the Church, has given us a most powerful means for appeasing her son's anger, uprooting heresy, and reforming Christian morals. In the confraternity of the Holy Rosary, it has proved its worth, for it has brought back charity and frequent reception of the sacraments which flourished in the first golden centuries of the Church, and it has reformed Christian morals. 
Pope Leo X said in his bull that his confraternity had been founded in honor of God and of the Blessed Virgin as a wall to hold back the evils that were going to break upon the Church. Gregory XIII said that the Rosary was given us from heaven as a means of appeasing God's anger and of imploring Our Lady's intercession. Jules III said that the Rosary was inspired by God in order that heaven might be more easily opened to us through the favors of Our Lady. Paul III and St. Pius V stated that the Rosary was given to the faithful in order that they might have spiritual peace and consolation more easily. Surely everyone will want to join a confraternity which was founded for such noble purposes. Father Dominic, the Carthusian, who was deeply devoted to the Holy Rosary, had this vision. Heaven was opened for him to see, and the whole heavenly court was assembled in magnificent array. He heard them sing the Rosary in an enchanting melody, and each decade was in honor of a mystery of the life, passion, or glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and of his Blessed Mother. Father Dominic noticed that whenever they said the sacred name of Mary, they bowed their heads, and at the name of Jesus they genuflected and gave thanks to God for the great good that he had wrought in heaven and on earth through the Holy Rosary, which the confraternity members say here on earth. He noticed, too, that they were praying for those who practiced this devotion. He also saw beautiful crowns without number, which were made of gorgeous, perfumed flowers, held in readiness for those who say the Holy Rosary devoutly. He learned that by every rosary that they say, they make a crown for themselves which they will be able to wear in heaven. This holy Carthusian's vision is very much like that which St. John the Beloved Disciple had. He had a vision of a very great multitude of angels and saints who continually praised and blessed our Savior Jesus Christ for all that he had done and suffered on earth for our salvation. This is precisely what the devout members of the Rosary Confraternity do. It must not be thought that the Rosary is only for women and for simple and ignorant people. It is also for men and for the greatest of men. As soon as St. Dominic acqu acquainted Pope Innocent III with the fact that he had received a command from heaven to establish the confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary, the Holy Father gave it his full approval, urged St. Dominic to preach it, and said that he wished to become a member himself. Many cardinals embraced the devotion with great fervor too, which prompted Lopez to say, Neither sex, nor age, nor any other condition has kept anyone from devotion to the Holy Rosary. Members of the confraternity have always been from all walks of life, dukes, princes, kings, as well as prelates, cardinals, and sovereign pontiffs. It would take too long to give all their names in this little book, which is but a summary. If you join the confraternity, dear reader, you will share in the devotion of your fellow members and in the graces that they gain on earth as well as in their glory in heaven. Since you are united to them in their devotion, you will share in their dignity. Thirtieth Rose, Confraternity Privileges If the value of a confraternity and the advisability of joining it are to be judged by the indulgences attached to it, then it can be surely said that the confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary is by far the most valuable one and that the faithful should be strongly urged to join it. This is because it has been awarded more indulgences than any other confraternity in the Church, and ever since its inception there has hardly been a Pope. Uh, Leo XIII modified this list of indulgences. We give it here because it is included in St. Louis' manuscript. And ever since its inception there has hardly been a Pope who has not opened up the treasures of the Church to enrich it with further privileges. Knowing that a good example is more compelling than glowing words and even favors, sovereign pontiffs have found that there was no better way to show their high regard for the confraternity than to join it themselves. Here is a short summary of the indulgences which they wholeheartedly granted to the confraternity of the Holy Rosary, and which were confirmed again by our Holy Father, Pope Innocent XI, on July 31st, 1679, and received and made public on September 25th of the same year by His Excellency, the Archbishop of Paris. 1. Members may gain a plenary indulgence on the day of joining the confraternity. 2. A plenary indulgence at the hour of death. 3. For each three groups of five mysteries recited, ten years and ten quarantines. 4. Each time that members say the holy names of Jesus and Mary devoutly, 
seven days indulgences. Five, seven years and seven quarantines may be gained by those who devoutly take part in or attend the Holy Rosary procession. Six, members who have made a good confession and who are genuinely sorry for their sins may gain a plenary indulgence, a plenary indulgence on certain days by visiting the Holy Rosary Chapel in the church where the confraternity is established. This plenary indulgence can be gained on the first Sunday of every month and on the feasts of our Lord and Our Lady. 7. For assisting at the Salve Regina. Footnote. The Salve Regina is sung in procession after Compline by the fathers and brothers in every Dominican monastery and also by Dominican sisters. This custom was started by St. Dominic. Since then, other orders and congregations have adopted this practice. M.B. For assisting at the Salve Regina, 100 days indulgence. 8. For those who openly wear the Holy Rosary out of devotion and to set a good example, may gain 100 days indulgence. Sick members who are not able to go to church may gain a plenary indulgence by going to confession and receiving Holy Communion, and by saying that day the Holy Rosary, if possible, or at least five decades. 10. Our sovereign pontiffs have shown their generosity towards members of the Rosary Confraternity, by allowing them to gain the indulgences, indulgences attached to the Stations of Rome by visiting five altars in the Church where the Rosary Confraternity is established, and by saying the Our Father and Hail Mary five times before each altar for the happiest state of the Church. If there are only one or two altars in the Confraternity Church, they should recite the Our Father and Hail Mary twenty-five times before one of them. This is a wonderful favor granted to Confraternity members, for in the Stational Churches in Rome, Plenary indulgences can be gained, souls can be delivered from purgatory, and many other great indulgences too can be gained by members with very little effort and no expense and without leaving their own country. And even if the confraternity is not established in the place where members live, they can gain the very same indulgences by visiting five altars in any church. This concession was granted by Leo X. The sacred congregation of indulgences grew up, drew up a list of certain definite days upon which those outside the city of Rome could gain the indulgences of the Stations of Rome. The Holy Father approved this list on March the 7th, 1678, and commanded that it be strictly observed. These indulgences can be gained on the following days, all the Sundays of Advent, each of the three Ember Days, also Christmas Eve, at Midnight Mass, the Daybreak Mass, and at the Third Mass, the Feast of St. Stephen, that of St. John the Evangelist, the Feast of the Holy Innocents, the Circumcision and the Epiphany, the Sundays of Septuagesima, Sexagesima, Quinquagesima, and on every single day from Ash Wednesday to Low Sunday inclusively, each of the three Rogation Days, Ascension Day, the Vigil of Pentecost, every day during the Octave, and on each day and on each of the three September Ember Days. Dear Confraternity Members, there are numerous other indulgences which you can gain if you want to know about them. Look up the complete list of indulgences which have been granted to members of the Rosary Confraternity. You will see the names of the popes in question, the years in which they granted the indulgences, and many other particulars which I have not been able to include in this little summary.